Now once you land, you're going to go into the portal that's going to take us up to the top to the Altar of Summons, or the lift should I say, and then from there there'll be another lift that's going to take you up into the Embaru Engine. Once you actually enter the Embaru Engine, you'll see that the ground and everything that you're standing on is not exactly what it seems. There's going to be areas where the ground is sideways, and there's going to be areas where the ground is upside down. Things don't move exactly like they should. It looks like gravity is being pulled all the way to the walls. And this is specifically so that it kind of throws you off as you're going from place to place looking for chests. You'll start out needing to find two chests, and deceivingly it'll have you find the two chests right in front of you. And you think, oh, that's it, really? And so you go to pick a chest, and what you'll notice is that if you pick the wrong chest, it'll actually give you Embaru, which will count down to zero, and then it kills you. Which, theoretically in the lore, that's you strengthening Sabathun with the light and darkness infused Embaru. And if you choose the right one, then you don't die, and you actually get to continue on. The chest will disappear, and you move into the next section. So it's kind of teaching you that on the ground here, you'll see the two symbols, one looking like the jellyfish, and one that's kind of like an X with a dagger pointing down. Those are going to be the two symbols you're going to be seeing throughout the entire area, and those symbols are going to tell you which chest you need to pick up. So if you pick up the symbol that's got the X with the little arrow pointing down, that's going to give you a correct kind of, uh, you display your cunning message. And if you pick up the wrong symbol, the jellyfish, you're going to end up getting the Embaru message, which is going to kill you. And so your goal is to jump around from different areas and different platforms, and you'll get the little notifications where the chests are. If you have, uh, I don't know if it's because I had it on my ghost, or if it's part of the actual quest, because I usually do have like a, like a small uh, radius chest finder. I bet you if you put the larger one on, you can actually find all the chests and see where all the chests are. And so essentially what you're doing is you're running around looking for the symbols, and they can be hidden many places. They can be on the walls, they can be under the platform, they can be behind a platform, and they actually point across from each other as well sometimes too. So you think that the symbol that you're looking at is actually going to be for the chest that you're underneath, but in fact if it's tilted at a 45, it can sometimes be pointing to the other chest across the way. So it makes you pick the wrong one. And the idea is you're going to go through different circuits where you get three chests at a time, two chests at a time, and you're going to go through and try to get all those chests correct to move on to the next section. There's no timer, you can take your time, just walk around looking for all the chest spawns, trying to find the corresponding symbols that are next to them, and once you find the corresponding symbols that are next to them, you grab the appropriate chest, you're going to get the, your display, your cunning message, and you're going to move on to the next section until you finally get a mission success. You'll get like kind of a mission end screen, and that's how you know that you've done everything right. You get like a witch's key and an engram, and then you'll get the mist and mysteries and the mother morph. Uh, triumphs so that you can know that you're done with this particular area and you have like a certain amount of time that you can run around before it puts you back in orbit and so that's pretty much it for the Embaru engine section thanks very much for watching the video and I'll see you guys in the next one